Hi and welcome back to Neural Splendor. In this video we're going to go over familiarization of the fuel system on the ISX15 CM2250. There's just a few differences between a 2250 and a 2350 and the late 2350 and a 2450s. Uh, the big difference is the injection pump, the way it looks, how many high pressure lines go up to the rail. So let's get started with familiarization. The ISX-15, the fuel system, is on the driver's side of the engine, or the left side. We always view the engine from the flywheel housing looking forward. Number one is the fuel inlet manifold. There is a check valve in there. Number two is the electric lift pump that will prime your filter and system. Number three is a low pressure gear pump that builds approximately 185 PSI in the fuel system. Number four is your low pressure fuel filter. Number five is the fuel control housing that the fuel actuator bolts into. This bolts to the back of the high pressure pump head. Number six is the high pressure pump head. Number seven is the common rail. And number eight is the fuel return manifold. Uh, we went through this in the direction that the fuel flows through the system. At fitting number one, lower right in the picture, we have fuel coming in from the filter on the frame. That should be fuel filtered at 30 microns. The engine is running at idle. The fuel is being pulled through that housing. Follow the yellow arrows. It's being pulled into fitting number two. That's a banjo fitting through that line. And below it is the, high, the low pressure gear pump that's pumping the fuel to 185 approximate PSI and that pressurized fuel is going out fitting number three where it will travel behind that fuel manifold and pump assembly and go up to the uh, ECM cooling plate, the filter on the engine where it will return filter to four microns. When it returns, again following the yellow arrows, arrows heading towards the front of the engine, it will go into fitting four. At fitting four, if you take that banjo fitting out, it's got a filter in it. That filter is there in case someone introduces dirty fuel into the filter on the engine when they're doing a service. There is a proper procedure for pre-filling that filter. If it's not followed, the small screen inside that number four banjo fitting is the last chance to keep uh, particles out of that pump that will cause imminent failure to the uh, fuel system. So that screen can plug up if something was introduced and if it does you could have a restriction here causing 559 fault code. So that's one place to check. Uh, number seven is a fuel actuator and it is a feedback system. If you look over to number five that's where the actuator pigtail plugs into the engine harness and the ECM will monitor fuel pressure in the rail and then it uses a feedback system to send pulse width to actuator number seven and you'll see a picture of that a little bit later and that controls how much fuel pressure the high pressure head can build. It doesn't control it by dumping that high fuel pressure it controls it by the amount of fuel it allows into the pumping chambers on the high pressure head. I mentioned before that the fuel leaves the gear pump and goes up through the ECM cooling plate to the filter. And remember that's fuel filtered at 30 microns. And fitting number one is where fuel that comes out of the ECM cooler plate goes into the engine fuel filter, the engine mounted fuel filter. And this filter will filter at 4 microns, then it comes back out of fitting 2 and goes down to the high pressure pump. Here we have the fuel filter assembly. Fitting number 1 is a test port. You would take that plug out and you would screw in a gauge that goes to 0 to 30 PSI. You would then use the Insight software program to run the electric lift pump and you should have a minimum of 10 PSI at that fitting. You never crank the engine 
while you're doing this test. You're just using Insight to run the electric lift pump. You can also key off, wait a couple minutes, and do a key on once your test gauge is in place and the ECM will run the lift pump for about a, just about two minutes and you need to have a minimum of 10 PSI at that fitting. If you don't, then you need to check and see if you have a problem with sucking air or you have a problem with uh, the electric lift pump. Fitting number two and fitting number three, those I have covers, uh, rubber covers on the fittings. Those are copy check fittings where you check pressure drop across that high pressure filter. You are allowed a maximum of 10 PSI. So if you have 185 going in, you have to have no less than 175 coming out. Fitting number four is where you put a copy check fitting to dump fuel, to check for air in the fuel, and to simulate the system working. Fitting number five is the fitting that the return fuel line goes on. This is low pressure fuel that the engine is done with that it sends back to the tank. In this last slide, the green arrow is the fuel rail high pressure relief valve. If the actuator or the fuel system were to fail and the pump tried to make unlimited fuel pressure, that device that is pointed to with the green arrow would open up and dump fuel back to the tank so that the rail wouldn't overpressure and a line fail. The blue fitting is the banjo fitting that we would take out to screw our test fitting into. You always check for leakage at this fitting where the blue arrow is. Over on the right, the yellow arrow is pointing to the fuel pressure sensor that is part of the feedback system. And that sensor senses between about 6,000 and 40,000 PSI, and it's quite accurate. That takes us through familiarization of the fuel system. So we'll stop there. The next video will be the start of diagnostics in the fuel system. See you next time on Neural Splendor.